So we will first hear from the Dr. In Song, the, who is the assistant professor in the Department of uh, Geography, Environmental and uh, Society at the U University of Minnesota. One of her key research focuses is the human mobility and accessibility within transportation networks, especially at the urban and uh, uh, regional setting. She strives to promote equitable, green, and healthy transportation uh, planning with uh, cutting edge geospatial data and methods. Her presentation uh, this morning is titled Work, Family, and Emotional Responses in Females and Gender Nonconforming People. She will share with us her finding on whether gender and uh, gender identity in the broad sense um, may lead to distinct activity based uh, activity travel patterns using existing and new survey data collected in Minnesota. Dr. Uh, Song, let me, let's give her a hand and welcome her. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the ongoing project I'm working with uh, in Lee and other people uh, during the past uh, one year. And uh, to start with, uh, when we're looking at uh, the gender and the gender roles, although we think that is start to uh, converging, but still the traditional gender roles still exist. That, uh, that's the reason I come here right before my meeting is because I need to take care of my kids before I come over here. So that's what going to uh, significantly affect is how you schedule your everyday life and also uh, make your travel decisions um, like affect it, it very significantly. So uh, past researchers have um, uh, identify some of uh, the patterns that uh, women, women, uh, were going to have compared to men. So they were going to allocate more times for household, household supporting uh, trips and activities, and they tend to work closer to home uh, to reduce the commute time so that they can return home if necessary, and they were going to travel shorter distance, but usually in the chained trip pattern, so the trip were going to be chaining together. And uh, although uh, the research show that women are sometimes lack of access to cars, however, when they have access, they often rely heavily on driving because of the flexibility and the multitask throughout the days, and especially when they have the young kids presented in their family. And uh, moreover, when we're talking about transit uses, the women usually will have more concern about the safety and also the service reliability. Again, it's because the multiple testing during the trip. Um, however, most of the time, the research will going to focus on male and the female. And um, this means that when we use the data to do the analysis or even collect the data, we're going to use the sex at birth as the indicator to define the gender of a person. Um, However, gender is a broader term that is go beyond the biological sex or sex at birth. Um, it's, for example, the inner feeling of yourself, how you feel about yourself. Are you think, do you think you are women or men? Well, going to um, not limit it to women and men. Uh, it can be a gender non-conforming. It could be non-binary. So this is actually reflect how you experience in your past and the life experience, and also the general reaction to the social norms. So this are also well going to affect it. Even you have the same kind of trips and activities, you may have different experienced and, uh, and also well going to affect your health come differently. So on the right is a very, uh, it, it, it's, it's one way that we can very directly see that the gender is go beyond uh, the, uh, the binary female and males and could have multiple dimensions in Sites. And uh, additionally, uh, when we talk about gender, and we should not just look at it by itself. Um, sometimes at different life stage and, other th uh, and also uh, when you uh, have a different living environment, it's well going to start to interact with your other social identities. So this will going to uh, mean that we should view the gender identity as a social con construct 
instead of just um, like a biological sex per se. Um, so this being said, the intersectionality is essential for us to understand how women make their decisions and also the long binary person, how they feel and they interact with each other. So my, um, uh, my presentation today, we're going to looking at, because of this, my presentation today, we're going to look at three uh, questions at this point. So first, we're going to look at whether a person's gender identity may differ from their, uh, their sex, and also how such difference may affect our perception of their trouble needs and also their behaviors. Uh, the second one is when we consider gender and other social identities, do they inf how they influence or whether or not they influence the people's time or locations and travel behaviors uh, differently. And finally, uh, whether the work-life balance, like you are working and or you're not working and then you have kids at home and other things, may uh, affect the uh, behavior and also the subjective well-being of men, women, non-binary people differently. So in order to answer these questions, uh, we collect new data in Minnesota. Um, anyone that is 18 years or older can participate in this research. So we recruit people because our focus is understanding uh, women and the long binary. Uh, we were going to try to recruit as many as possible uh, with a more diverse back background from them. Um, and uh, for the male, we use that like the base for comparison. And the, uh, what we do is we first have an intake survey to collect their basic social demographic background. And also, we are going to include additional questions about their gender ident identities and the gender roles when they were living in their uh, family. And finally, uh, we're going to use um, Dynamica to collect the travel diary. Um, the reason is because we want to, uh, so over the case, we were going to know the trip purposes and trip companionship, but we want to directly ask the person whether or not your trip or activities involve the household supporting test. So this will going to an, allow us to further understanding, okay, so why, what is the time or location between household and non-household supporting test? And we also are going to uh, looking at experience, the emotions, and besides, I know many of you already use the Dynamica, so in addition to the, um, the, the standard uh, dimensions of uh, the emotion, uh, we also include safety. Do you feel safe uh, during the activity and trips in order to capture um, like females, uh, uh, women's more concerns uh, about the safety issues? So um, the data collected is from October to uh, December 2021. And uh, finally, we have 781 participants, uh, participants uh, in the intake survey, which is pretty good, considering it's like the entire data collection is just three months. And we have 278 participants provide 14 days of travel di activity and travel diaries with good quality. Um, I include this a figure over here. It's not to show the number distribution across different groups. It's just to show that even during the data collection part, uh, if we're looking at like the how different gender and intersect with their race would have different reaction to the data collection period. For example, you can see that for the long white population groups, they participate in the intake, but afterward, due to their other kind of responsibility or time, uh, like poor time or other things, they are very likely to not be able to finish the uh, data collection eventually. And also when we're looking at the distribution of the participants, most of them are still from the metro area, but we do be able to have some participants from the uh, suburb and the rural area participating as well. Um, so I'm going to go directly into the uh, discussion of the findings. So the first thing we want to see is, okay, so we include additional question regarding um, 
the gender identity and gender roles, and how the differences between like sex, gender identity, and gender pronouns, and different dimensions of gender could be different. So this figure will just to show uh, three of the questions that we included. The first question is more towards the biological sex. So we asked the participant whether or not you are going to be considered as a transgender. So if you think about that, it's linked more towards the biological sex, so whether or not they have that. And, uh, and the second question is, uh, how you what is your self-identified gender? So what do you think your gender identity is? And this will going to include female, male, and long binary. Um, and finally, we'll also ask people's gender prolong, which, like, uh, which includes she, her, hers, he, him, his, uh, they, they them, and also some people avoid gender prolong. Um, for all this question, consider that people may not will feel comfortable to answer it. We also include the option that I prefer not to answer it. So this will go, This figure shows that. Um, so for the tran transgender population, they may mainly consider themselves as non-binary, but sometimes they may fully consider themselves as female or males. And, um, and then we were going to have uh, them to have, looking at different pro pronouns is more complex. So uh, based on this part, we consider we should just stick to the self-identified gender in order to uh, use that for our further analysis. So keeping that in mind, then later on when we do the analysis, we are going to just use the uh, participant self-identified gender to do the analysis. And the first thing we want to look at first is whether or not we should consider long binary when we're looking at the trouble need and thing. So this is an example uh, question that we ask, what, what is your transit barriers? As the blue one uh, shows, I know the text is a little uh, small, but the blue one shows that um, the female and males, uh, sorry, the female and non-binary have similar barriers and uh, like their males. However, uh, the, the females, are, for example, females and non-binary are more concerned about safety and they are more concerned about the reliability. But at the same time, the non-binary people is also feel additional challenges regarding presenting public space. So this may, and also when we're looking at the percentage, it may, the non-binary have an even higher percentage of the bi, uh, ba, the barriers um, compared to females. So this means that we should consider the long binary uh, gender when we are asking people about their concern and things. Then we're looking at the what is the gender differences in everyday life. Uh, we do find that females still in the data we collected during the COVID and in Minnesota show more household tasks uh, in things like cooking, cleaning, and laundry. But the female do have fewer tasks, for example, for long care, uh, and also care for people other than kids, like elders or senior and the people. And long binary couples, uh, compared to female and uh, males, they are more like equally share the household, so they're roughly like 50 percentage for all different kinds of tasks. So this is from the intake. And then when we're looking at the data collective for their real activity trouble, the actually activity trouble. Um, so what we can find that as female, uh, we're going to have more out home uh, durations for trips, even during the COVID. And we uh, expected the further analysis, we find that it's very likely to relate it to the essential trips, such as shopping, grocery, and things. So this means that the gender differences are still exist um, uh, in the in nowadays and also during the COVID they still persist over there. And uh, we also, when we're looking at that, uh, in, instead of just to visualize it, we're also looking at the uh, how statistic the difference will going to be. And we separate the analysis from weekend to weekdays. Um, this will, so I'm just going to summarize some of the key find findings over here. So we do find female and long binary people have more time allocated to household tests 
and they have smaller activity space. So the activity space is what is the region they have been for their activities and travels. And for the weekend, however, although female and non binary people still have more household tasks, um, like female has much more increased leisure time activity space. So this potentially we're going to attribute for other kind of activity like taking children to leisure activities and also uh, to do like a shopping and go out for uh, for lunch for the female people, uh, female. And for non-binary people, however, they still have a very small, like small activity space. Uh, this is also because they, they still not feel very comfortable to present in the public space. Um, we continue with question three and examine the subjective well-being outcomes, uh, starting also with just uh, looking at on average what happened and looking at all the dimensions from happy, meaningfulness, say, um, stressed, um, sad, tired, and uh, pain. And we find that the female number of people has overall low net effect, like overall emotional outcomes values on, on average. And uh, on weekend, all gender has better ones, but the gender gaps are still over there. And finally is the part that we want to focus more on the work-life balance. So that's the reason we are going to separate the group based on their employment status during the COVID, which include work from home only, work out of home only, or work both inside or outside of the home. And then we'll also consider like people not employed or retired. And then after that, we also consider in combination, so attach, uh, attached to the intersectionality I mentioned earlier, we consider whether or not they're living with their kids, because we know that when during the COVID, kids often do not go to school. So work from home may means that you need to have take care of the kids. So the outcome over here, based on the previous, uh, looking at the happiness level and tideless is because we find uh, although female has more happiness, like a happiness level, but sometimes they feel more tired. So visual exploration will going to guide us to looking at both net effect, happiness level, and tideless level. The variables we selected uh, will include person level, characters like gender, gender identity, and race, age, student status, and education attainment, and household level uh, with living with partner or a lot, age of the youngest kids, and also whether or not it's under poverty and the residential area, whether it's rural or uh, metro area. Um, and the end of this survey is derived from the dynamic data looking at the hours of times allocated between household tasks and non-household tasks, whether or not you spend a lot of time on work or study, and whether you have a lot like sufficient sleep at night, and also whether or not you have physical activities and also the active travel modes to have enough active life uh, during the COVID, and finally, what is the area of your activity space? So this were going to be the variables we're looking at. So um, there are a lot of results. I would just want to point out that we do find that female, lumber, and gender are negatively associated with that effect. So overall, they do not have as good experience as, as male. So, and a lot of them are very like significant different over there. And uh, although the age, income, and residence area are not significant affected, and also the other factors, we do find if we consider the intersectionality, for example, we're looking at unemployed people or retired people who are living in the low income household, then it's across the, gen the all the groups, they are tends to have more negative outcomes. So uh, for the other part regarding mobility, they are not quite significant, although they have mixed uh, effect on the results. And we further look at like what contributes to that overall net effect, then what we're looking at is happiness level. So uh, the female is significantly active associated with happiness only if they work from home and do not have kids. So this will going to mean that when we're looking at their emotional outcome, we do have to looking at the intersectionality with other type of characters they have. Um, 
And finally, the title is, is uh, we do find the flexibility of working location. For example, people can either work outside or at home. This kind of people will tend to associate with less kind of titles uh, regarding what, uh, what they experienced on a daily basis. And people living with kids who work from home sometimes or all the times are more likely to feel tired. So this is not surprising, but the data do prove this is true uh, in the Minnesota case. So in sum, we do find that gender identity besides the female and the male should be taken into account when we are looking at the needs and uh, the experience of the uh, female and the non-binary people. And uh, female do still share more household tasks during the COVID part. And non-binary people is kind of like equal share between the partners. Um, the third, question, third part is the female number of people has um, not as good as subject to well-being outcomes and the present of the kids that not always leads to negative well-being outcomes. For example, if uh, for people who work outside the home, male, when they come home and have some family time with the kids, the actually happiness and tide could be like improved uh, on a daily basis. So what should we do in the future? What we plan to do is we, need, we should consider uh, to include self-identified gender instead of sex when we try to understand the gender gaps and gender difference in travel demands and travel needs and experiences. And we, in order to uh, do that, we also want to also understand the long commuting household supporting trips that we're looking at how people have so many trips and how that affected, and address further address the interdependency of trip activity. At this point, we are working, we have a paper that looking at the sequence of the activities and trips, um, and we are working on uh, mod modify that to have uh, the household supporting patterns. And for, uh, furthermore is to further address the intersectionality, not just use regression model, but use other methods. Uh, a paper is under a work uh, during that concept. Um, uh, this is our team. I, Choose that figure because it's the rainbow color for the long binary uh, sense. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, this project is supported by MinDOT under the Gender Equity Project. Thank you.